Hello and welcome to What The Lux with me, Fred Moore, and me, Anand Sharma. Together we lead Matter of Form, a design consultancy specialising in brand, digital experience and content. And this is a podcast that calls time on tired ideas of luxury. Alongside industry luminaries and thought leaders, we explore what truly defines category-leading products and services. Natasha Frank is the founder and CEO of E.ON. E.ON make every product traceable, intelligent and more valuable. Through their proprietary technology, they connect every item to a unique digital ID to power an impressively wide scope of business needs and unlock new capabilities across the full life cycle. From embedding sustainability and transparency into each item, to preventing counterfeiting and fraud, to unlocking resale and much, much more, the user cases have mind-boggling potential. Retail as we know it will look very different five years from now, and we suspect Natasha will have a big role to play in those changes. Uh, Natasha, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Fred. So you're in New York. Um, it's, it's early morning for you. Thanks for coming on. But firstly, we'd love to know a little bit about your background um, and how did you become, how did you get into this? How did you become the founder of Eon? Well, thank you so much. Uh, well, it started about seven years ago and I worked in smart cities and really smart cities look at the future of how people will live and how they're, they'll interact with the world around them. And through that work, you know, started to see some of the most disruptive technologies in recent years have actually been digital twins, right? So Uber is a digital twin of your car and Airbnb is a digital twin of your home that unlocks the ability to monetize the home and and live and travel in new ways. And basically, when we look at the rise of digital ID within fashion retail, digital ID really enables that connection between the digital and the physical world. Um, and I the introduction of digital twinning into apparel or objects of our everyday life is unlocking an entirely new potential of the world around us. And so that was the genesis for me of, you know, looking to introduce digital twinning technology to the everyday objects of our life and how that would steward more value for brands, um, more sustainability for products and more integrity and value for users. This is not a small in scope business idea it's huge have you always sought out a challenge because because not everyone wants to start a business like this i think i was naive and i didn't know how big it was and had i known oh my goodness i mean when i started it was just it felt so obvious right i think we will look back and say oh i can't believe that once upon a time products didn't have id just like products have a barcode today but we remove that ID the moment the product is sold, right? So it is an obvious thing that we will make a transition into every physical product having an ID and that product being an asset long after point of sale. And so because it felt so obvious to me, I thought, you know, I'll call a few of these big brands and retailers and I'll tell them, you know, they need to do this and they'll do this, you know? And and seven years later, I think we're still seeing brands, you know, now we are seeing brands really roll this out at scale. And there are a lot of factors that have come together to drive that tipping point. So I'd say within the next five years, we will be in a world of digital ID ubiquity. I think the change will happen quite quickly, um, driven by one new legislation across the EU. You will actually be required to have a digital ID for every product. Two, when I started Eon, you couldn't actually scan a QR code with your mobile phone and just connect. Now you can tap an NFC chip, right? So you could literally tap your bag, the same technology for Apple Pay with the chip in the bag and instantly connect. So you have this rise of legislation mandating the digital ID. You have now a native ability for every customer to just connect to their physical products. And you also have the rise of new business models, right? Resale, um, rental, new services that, are, that mandate that products have an ID to be able to, to manage. Yeah. Now, I want to get on to legislation and, and also the user cases, but just starting at the very beginning is, um, can, can you tell us actually what the technology is? Just for people who, who don't know much about the area, might be a bit naive to, to the whole space. Like what is your technology and what, what's the technology, I guess, that exists already with brands or in phones or, or wherever? Yes, that would be that would be a good idea. Thank you. We, um, I often get into the sort of impact of the digital ID, which is really the inspiring part. But in some ways, you might think of, I guess I'll introduce Eon, which is basically we provide a software, which you could think of as like a CRM for your products. 
right? So it is quite obvious now that we ID customers and brands use a software to do that. And they use that software to also manage all the relationships that they have with their customers. That's what your sales force allows you to do, essentially. And in quite common sense, you now need basically the same thing for your products. You need a way to uniquely ID the product. You need a way to manage all the data associated to that product. And you need a way to manage all the relationships that that product has from supply chain through retail, through customer use, through resale and recycle. And so basically what the Eon Product Cloud Platform does is we create that digital twin or that data profile of each product. We enable that digital twin to be connected to the physical product, right? So a digital ID is always bridging the gap between the digital and the physical. So you have your data profile in the cloud, and then you have some connection that links that data profile to the physical product. That can be an NFC chip, an RFID, a QR code, visual recognition. As a platform, Eon is agnostic. So what starts to happen is every physical product has a digital twin. And that digital twin is accessible via the physical product. And the digital twin speaks different sets of information depending on who's engaging with it. So when the customer scans with their phone, they get a set of information. When the reseller scans with their application, they'll get a set of information. When the recycler scans, they'll get a set of information. When the brand's repair service scans, they'll get a set of information. And all of those people will also be able to write back information into the digital ID. So you will start to have for every single physical product, this birth certificate, right? All the information that's true about the item when it's created. And you'll also have a passport for every item. So this item was, you know, reordered. This item was resold. This item was recycled and basically the movement of assets. In a sense, it's not like you've invented some piece of um, ninja technology that's never been invented before. It's It sits above that. The complexity and the magic is in how essentially brands or users use the technology to, for, for the provenance of the product and to use the idea in a unique way to serve, like, I don't know, right? Like, so sustainability or reselling or um, preventing fraud. Can, can you just talk about like very practical sense of how, how Eon works to help brands? Yeah. So basically there's a combination. There's a lot of software development to build basically a CRM for your product. So we spent the past seven years building that infrastructure for brands to basically come in and create that digital twin and automate all the capabilities associated to that product, from authentication to resale to policy to customer engagement. And I think we're just beginning to scratch the surface as well of all the possibilities that are enabled through the physical world. Um, we also take a really proactive position in industry, actually building that data infrastructure that connects currently siloed products, right? So if you think about it, today there's no ability for a brand like Chloe to share data with their partner Vestier Collective for resale. Now Eon has built that data connection. So basically when the customer scans that digital ID, we can enable that information to be automatically up to, uploaded into Vestier Collective, that listing to be automatically populated and that customer to have that seamless experience. Now that Eon has built these connections, other brands can also tap into that. So you start to see how the platform is really a big data network um, that allows this sort of interoperability and connectivity between assets across the value chain. Same for brands and the myriad of, of resale partners. So what you can think about now is leveraging what we call the Eon Exchange. Brands can start to activate multiple different connections and networks for a single product. So... You know, I'd say the way that we look at resale today is very analog, right? A customer is going to resell through a specific, you know, brand has one specific resale partner. But really, products are resold everywhere in the world and brands are not generating revenue off of those transactions. Now, with the digital ID, the customer can simply scan that, right? Eon delivers them that customer experience. We are also invisible, so it looks fully like a branded experience, right? Right scan and it's, you know, you are the brand that has created the digital ID. And now based on the user's location, let's say they're in New York, we can populate that listing to the brand's preferred resale partner, say it's eBay in the US. Or let's say actually in New York, they want you to drop off in store, it will show you the nearest store location, right? So the digital ID is dynamic in that the capabilities that it allows are also responsive to 
the user's location, the brand's needs, and and that allows every product to essentially be like pre-programmed for resale. To me, like c- certain user cases, like you've talked about the, the reselling element or or preventing fraud or provenance and sustainability, that, that makes sense. I mean, I'm particularly intrigued though by the storytelling aspect that digital IDs uncover, particularly as we work for luxury brands. Um, can you just go in a little bit more into that and explain how that might come alive? I'd say, especially for luxury, there there is so much that goes into each product. And many of those intentions, design stories, inspirations, material choices, all of those are really invisible in terms of looking at that physical product and knowing the designer story, the material story. And so what the digital ID does is actually gives every element of that product voice. Now the customer can, you know, engage with the product and understand exactly even down to what music inspired the artist, if you want to put that in the digital ID. You have the video of the maker. You can, you know, you can have the story of the material. You can have histories of the people who've worn that signature product before and what it's meant in history, you know, giving even more of an iconic voice to these assets. So I think, um, especially for luxury, like every product is an asset. And when something is an asset, it should have an ID, right? Um, And so it just is so obvious. I also think it's becoming a, you know, when you buy a luxury product, you do not have one place to access services. You don't have one place to access the warranty, right? So now all of that is in one touch point at the customer's fingertips, and you, it will be a baseline expectation. You know, one of our clients says the next generation receipt really just so brass tacks that every product will be expected to have an ID that proves the authenticity, that gives you that warranty, that gives you that certificate of ownership, that records every transaction. And honestly, those transactions, yes, they may be related to the resale, right? And, you know, the product and generating revenue throughout the product life cycle for the brand. But those transactions may also be also more poetic, right? I passed the item on to my daughter on, you know, on her, you know, birthday or some, what have you, right? So I think the digital ID transcends both the super practical and actually the ability to scale profitably these new business models, but also the quite poetic in that products have a story. Um, and this is a way to record those stories, transcribe memories um, and build worlds around the, the things that we value. I just wonder actually what, what the challenges are in getting brands to, to take on your technology. How easy is it? That's a wonderful question. And the challenges have evolved. In the very beginning, it was, what is this and why are you calling? You know, I'd say. And now it's, okay, we understand something about this and we're trying to deploy this and we know we have to do this at scale. And we want a trusted partner. Which job title is this? Who are you speaking to? So often CTO, solution architect, um, CDO, really it's executive leadership involved. And then it is how do we build this roadmap for scale, right? And how do we design a digital infrastructure that allows us the extensibility for all the capabilities that we know we're going to need from our physical products? Right. Because if you think about it, you're creating a digital twin now. Right. And you're adding a few features to the product. But in the near future, you may be connecting that product to Instagram. You may be connecting that product to a smart closet application. You may be right. The physical, the capabilities of the physical world are going to be exponential. And so kind of like a Tesla, you want to think that you're putting those products out into the wild, but you have the ability to continually update them with new capabilities. And so how do you design for that? And so that's where Eon really is. That's our superpower. So we are really, first and foremost, a big data management company. So we specialize in managing all the thousands of data points associated to a single product. And management of those data points allow us, and with our API-first infrastructure, allows us to really start to connect that product to a multiplicity of use cases, customer services, um, and gives brands that flexibility. I guess like fashion, is that the is that been the first to take it on or is it is that not like is it wider retail? Yeah, I'd say fashion, apparel and retail is definitely an industry that's moving very quickly towards digital ID. There are other verticals. There's, you know, um, batteries will be facing regulation from the DPP. 
but I do in electronics, but I do think that there's something unique about fashion in that the products really will need to speak to the customer. And the digital ID will hold a lot of non-policy and compliance value. This is e-commerce moving into every physical product, right? This will be as disruptive as the internet itself. This is the internet, right? Like if you think about, so Natalie Masney, who founded Netaporte, she sits on the board of Eon and, you know, she speaks about how she brought fashion on the internet, but how Eon in our work is really bringing the internet into fashion, right? Because now that connectivity is within each and every physical product. So it's quite um, beautiful, but I think because it's so transformational, right, it's, it's hard for people to imagine new futures. And that's one of the things we see is that when we talk to a client, it's like they're operating within the world that exists today and, you know, have maybe a specific way that certain business processes run or specific ways that customers are engaged with. But, you know, connected products will really change all that. One example would be, you know, today we don't really know. Yes, we have CRMs that tell us, you know, you're Fred, right? But we really know what Fred, the products that surround your life are across multiple different brands. Well, basically now with DigiID and applications that connect into DigiID, Fred will have an application that allows you to basically, you know, associate ev- all your products to you. And that will actually be, once we know all of Fred's products, then we actually sell to Fred based on what he has and what he is using and how he what we are anticipating. You know, so the last thing you want when you go shopping, which is the experience today, which is, you know, why I never shop, is you have to go looking for what you want. You know, that is not a luxury experience. You know, a luxury experience is being surfaced exactly what you want like a gift. And so with the data and with the understanding of a customer and the products that they have, you will no longer have to go to a website and search white sneaker and be surfaced you know 50 million sneakers you will be able to say this white sneaker is perfect for you because these are the items you have and so in that way the combination of the crm data with eons data which is the digital id and the the product cloud data you now can have a one-to-one relationship between customer and product to basically say is fred's bag or all these are all fred's assets and so i think that that is where you're really going to see this seismic shift in terms of like what it means to connect and service customers, um, really anticipating and gathering all of that those that intelligence from from the world around them. Yeah, that actually shows, just that example shows how the scope of transformation is so vast with what you're talking about, but it must present a real headache for you in that also the user cases are almost infinite. You could go down every rabbit hole possible with this. Is that a challenge for your business at the board level? You know, because obviously specializing is easier. It's easier to get traction in a in a singular vertical, even bit a niche within a vertical. But you could almost use this everywhere. Yes, I think Eon's actually role is very specific and very repetitive. You know, sometimes what our board says is Eon actually what you do enables so much, but what you yourselves do is quite boring. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically. Digital IDs unlock a lot of capabilities, and we actually do one simple thing. We ID the product, and we manage the data, and we bridge the physical and the digital, and we provide sort of pre-built capabilities to to enable some of those. And then we basically, depending on the brand, work with them to unlock the capabilities that they are interested in, right? So one brand may be focused on resale and connecting their product to this resale partner, well, then that use case is activated, right? But our work, and that's also why we're able to build excellence in it, is we have, you know, built over the past seven years a lot of processes that reduce all the friction associated with what I now can describe to you in a very easy way. You know, and I think um, the other thing about that is there is a lot of consistency because many of the use cases that I'm describing to you, which are more on the sort of ethereal and creative side of, you know, while I do think they will be coming quite quickly, Um, many of the use cases today are really quite consistent across the brands um, in terms of, you know, a customer experience for the digital ID, cross-selling to the customer, easy reorder, resale, services. There's just a lot of sort of modules that everyone in industry will be embedding in their products. 
then there will be a world of sort of applications that connect into those digital IDs. And we view ourselves at this point as an enabler. We are not kind of building user applications, but user applications can connect into, or even brands can build applicate. Brands are building their own applications on top of Eon. So for example, you could take your brand app and now scan your products, right? And now we know Natasha is reselling her product and this is sort of the, the exact um, interaction that she's having with the item. Earlier, you said um, you touched on the fact that timing is so important. It's it's an ob- it's, it's an obvious idea, but it seems so um, it se- it does seem obvious. It seems that everyone should be doing this, but you need timing. And I'm particularly interested in what you touched on as well about legislation. Can you just go a bit further into um, who's legislating where to help the uptake of digital IDs uh, and how that's going to impact you? Yes, absolutely. So across there's there's various legislative initiatives that are accelerating digital ID. And I'd say any legislation, even if, it's, even if it's not specifically related to Digital ID that involves sustainable product data, is, is an accelerant for adopting a software like Eon, right? So, but there are specific legislations that are mandating items have a Digital ID. That will be across the EU um, as part of the EU Green New Deal. Every product will be required to have a digital ID, and that's looking for, you know, 2027. We'll be seeing a lot more on that. Then you also have within the U.S., you have digital care label. So that's actually saying that you will no longer just have your sort of care label on the garment in terms of, you know, all of this very small text that no one really sees or uses. You will have that in digital form, in the form of a QR code. So that that will be mandated. Now, those are basically... Those models um, or those policy requirements are essentially mandating a very rudimentary digital ID. So that baseline will become like the new brass tax. And then brands that deliver services through the digital ID, like resale and music and content and invitations, those will be the ones that are really capitalizing on the digital ID. Cool. And then, as you know, we're involved in luxury brands and uh, luxury digital experience for luxury. We always firstly just like to challenge the traditional conventions of luxury. It'd be interesting to know personally what, what luxury means for you. I think luxury is something that is sort of inspiring the excellence and the best. You know, that it's, I think about it less in terms of like a material value, but what it sort of represents. Um, and to me, it's just the elevation of living. Right. It's living in the best possible and giving sort of attention to every detail and excellence in every craft. And just that idea of how you bring those sensibilities into your life as an individual. Like, I just think luxury represents something very beautiful in that way um, of doing things with incredible focus and attention and craft and discipline. I would totally agree with that and the qualities that would make a great luxury brand i think are those things you've described but of course traditionally they're terribly slow at innovating do you do you um do you find that or not i've found very different types of personalities um within in luxury and i'd say because of this sustainability impact of digital id and how the digital id plays a role in stewarding the embedded quality and investments that are made in luxury products, it has been very well received, right? Like I'd say like a lot of technology that has approached the fashion industry has been gimmicky, has been without purpose, has been without kind of an integrity. Like it just feels like tech for the purpose of tech, right? And that is not a luxury experience, right? That's not inspiring something. Whereas the digital ID and the the idea of creating a product that is intelligent and has a story and an ongoing value associated to it, that is like very aligned to the values of luxury. Um, and it's sort of just a steward for the stories, the investments um, that are that are already being made in those products. I also think um, today when luxury produces products, most of those investments are lost. You know? And You've seen a lot of the thriving resale businesses, you know, go public selling the resale, the products of luxury brands. Now, why are the, why is all that embedded quality that's created by the luxury brand being lost on and capitalized on by third parties? With the digital ID, it's like, okay, you are the brand, you've created this asset, you should believe that it's valuable, and you should therefore be creating a connected community 
or service related to the ongoing life cycle of those products. Yeah, I think because one of the attractions of luxury is high price point, yes, but but that's different from providing good value and the good value aspects that these things last a lifetime and also quite often last like three generations of lifetimes. But why shouldn't the brand have a say in that journey, not just the consumer? Exactly. And the brand should steward that journey. And I think now with you also have this cultural and societal awakening around, okay, we do have an environmental crisis. And luxury should be inspiring solutions for that. Um, and if we're looking to luxury for excellence and innovation and, you know, kind of charting new ideals, then that's the ideal that, like, our generation will be moving towards. And so I think it it provides luxury a way to, you know, solve for the big challenges. Yeah, I think um, I'm really interested by the storytelling aspect we touched on before, but above and beyond everything i think the mass production element of the world i just can see how this can really help luxury to help transform elements of that of owning owning less using it better for longer i can see how how you could play a massive part in that for luxury brands and then also enabling the brands to capitalize on that my sort of ideal is the brands that actually are creating the highest quality longer lasting products that are stewarded through multiple life cycles with a connected consumer community around them are the ones that will be the most profitable and so that's the version we're trying to accelerate yeah and just zooming out a bit you've got a good observer's space on retail and e-commerce and, and those areas just just sort of moving into the wider space um other than digital ids is there any innovation that particularly excites you I'm excited by a lot of the material regeneration solutions. I'm excited by um, material tracking solution. We don't, we are not a material tracking solution, but what we do is we associate materials to the product ID. So you're actually able to scan this product and have all the material information. So I think those offer a lot of value to to the work in the brands. I'm excited for what's happening in terms of new customer services related to life cycle, right? And I think a lot of the resale partners have been working very closely with brands to kind of deliver this this new resale models as more of an embedded service. And we've been partnering with a lot of resale companies to build that connective tissue. I'm less excited about the sort of NFT kind of community. I I think that was also hard in the early days of Eon of trying to explain, you know, the difference of what a digital ID is and a connected product with the whole NFT craze. I do really focus in technology that has positive, you know, impact for society. So that's, you know, core value for, for us and the way the technologies that really inspire me. Um, and I, I don't see that as much in the sort of kind of NFT world. I do think there's a lot of opportunity at the intersection between the digital and the physical that are not yet driving revenue for brands. You know, like what else, how, how does your product move, how does your physical product offer capabilities and services and invitations and content and community? And And when people are buying products, it's oftentimes for many reasons other than just buying that physical product, right? It represents things. And so how do you actually deliver users more of a world from their products? And I think there's a lot of opportunities there. This is such a bad question, but I can ask it anyway. Um, Do do you see anything about AI and fashion that interests you? Oh, definitely. I mean, all of the big data too that we collect at Eon, like this is Google Analytics for physical products. You know, so what does it mean when all that big data is delivering, you know, new kinds of intelligence? I just think there's a lot of intersections between the the data that we're collecting and what AI will make possible with this information. Okay, not such a bad question, actually. No. (laughs) Yeah, no, a lot of people are like, oh, well, does AI cannibalize your business? And I'm like, no, we're an Internet of Things company like this is. (laughs) Well, I think it's because everyone sees AI as such a paradigm shift. It's like there was nothing before and now there's something. And and of course, it's actually just it's an evolving thing that's been going on for about 130 years. Right. It does make me think about that connected closet. Right. And like sort of like how we service customers and customers, you know, that really becoming much more, much more dynamic not just going to search for white sneaker you're going to be looking for and presented exactly what you want and that connection between the physical asset and the world of ai is going to really accelerate who's able to get the right products in the hands of the right customers final question really before we do the outro questions is where do you see eon in 10 years time 
You know, Eon was exciting to me as an idea and something that I felt that I could dedicate my life to because the idea felt very expansive, right? Once you idea product, you're unlocking capabilities from those products. You're, you know, you're always building upon this sort of initial thing. And also what's kind of beautiful is that I do believe that DigiID is the biggest leverage point into a sustainable model for commerce. So I would like, you know, where we see Eon is we are building an incredibly powerful enterprise software for brands to do this. And we believe this will become a new critical for the enterprise tech stack, right? Every brand will be adopting the same way they adopted a CRM. They will be adopting an Eon and embedding, you know, this sort of integrity in their products. Um, and they will have essentially what Eon is, which is like a PRM, a product relationship management system, you know? And so I do believe we are the leader within industry for that. We power this for, you know, the biggest luxury players, the biggest mass market players. Um, and so I believe we'll continue to take a role in leading that future and, and showing industry not only how to implement and excelling that, but then what becomes possible once you implement. And we do see this as the biggest, the really biggest unlock for sustainable business model transformation. And what's pretty cool is while we do work with all the brands, we also work on the other side with recyclers and resellers and repair partners who are connecting into the DigiID. We work on a two-sided, right? We have the brands who are creating DigiIDs and we have the third parties who are connecting into the DigiIDs. And we're enabling that access and exchange of information and data. So you can really think about it as this fully functioning data ecosystem enabling, you know, the communication between physical products across the entire value chain. And I really do think, you know, any good system relies on good communication. And the circular economy today is not a functioning system because there's no communication. And so from a, you know, outside of just our core commercial role, I think Eon will play a big part in building those networks and in industry for communication across the, the circular value chain. We do always ask the same four questions to all our guests on this podcast on the way out. So I'm going to put you under the microscope. So the first question is, what irritates you most about your industry? Um, lack of uh, vision, creativity, possibility. Uh, so short-termism, basically. Short-term, exactly. Okay. Um, what most concerns you about the world we're leaving the next generation? Um, I'd say that's definitely one that's shared. How are we going to solve the problems that we've created for our next generation? If you had to give up your job tomorrow, what would you do? Oh, no, I have thought about that in the early days. If Eon didn't work, what would I do? I mean, I think at this point I'd have to crawl under a hole and cry for two years. So it's not even something you're willing to contemplate? Yes, correct. And lastly, what's the most exciting thing for you personally in the next five years? Growing. I think growing the team, growing the impact, growing the opportunity and, and leading this next milestone. I feel very fortunate that our team has brought the company to the place where it is today. And I think now that we have these, you know, this position, we have an opportunity to make big changes. And I just feel very lucky for that. Well, Natasha, thank you so much um, for being on the podcast. Um, this is an area our listeners are really interested in and need education on. And uh, you've been really illuminating. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening. This has been What The Lux. You can find us on socials at Match Reform and drop us any questions or comments on Twitter using the hashtag WhatTheLux. Or if you're a luxury brand looking for strategy and design that goes beyond the banal, get in touch via hello at matchreform.com and chat to one of our consultants.